We are going to talk to you today about PGS testing and our decision process or how we came to the conclusion about paying that extra fee for PGS testing. On Facebook, I seem to be coming across a lot of gals that are questioning whether or not it's necessary and if they want to spend the extra money and they're heeing and hawing and, and not in a bad way, it's just they're inquiring. And with that being said, we wanted to take a moment and share our choice. Check out our pumpkins, by the way. Look how cute mm -hmm. they are. Um, it's October. Um, anyway, so PGS testing. Just so you know what PGS testing is, there's two different ones. There's a, a PGS and a PGD testing. One takes longer than the other. One's more intricate. Um, without going into too much details, um, there's a, people that have genetic cursors, genetic things that they might pass along, whether they, it affects them in their current life or not. It's just in their DNA, their genes, and it passes along. Some of these things have to be tested from the parents, from like him, he would have to be tested, I would have to be tested, and then the embryos would have to be tested to see if that passed along. Most people know they have whatever said gene mm -hmm. is. I mean, it's science is amazing, and we're talking about a large amount of genes and things that people ask, um, could I pass it along, or it runs in my family, and stuff. So there's a screening, and I think, I don't know what the D one is, Please do your research because we're not doctors. We're just talking about our own personal experience. Some take three days. Some take five days for results. Some take longer. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. In our scenario, it was $4,000. $2,000 to the Genesis company who does it. And two, th I'm sorry. Yeah, $2,000 to our clinic. And mm -hmm. two, it was nineteen fifty plus fifty for transporting or whatever, so it was two thousand to Genesis. Mm -hmm. So it totaled four thousand. Um, and we took a truck loan out, a title loan, to do this because we felt it was that important um, of a process. So why did we choose to do it? Why? <laughs> well, we just, you look at spend the money now, and you I mean if you have embryos that weren't going to. Um, survive anyway or, or successfully implant either because they were uh, genetically deficient you know whatever different circumstance it is it's you could end up spending that money you know more than once if you don't get the testing and you end up picking uh, you know the the wrong egg basically or the wrong yeah. embryo mm -hmm. um, for implant so it was worth it to spend the money, eliminate those ones that would not have implanted anyway, um, or have some other, you know, um, you know, birth defect or something like that, uh, versus doing a, a failed implant, you know, uh, um, and then having to go about it the whole process again. We wanted to basically raise our odds for a one one shot, a one time, yeah, you know, the first time, you know, success. So to be just to reiterate on what he's saying miscarriages happen they're gonna happen they could happen with a perfect embryo a pgs tested embryo the human body is amazing everything has to be right the little house that you have your little embryo in your uterus has to be perfectly timed to have the right chemical composition to accept the embryo and the embryo has to be be viable like it has to be and have all the components to become a fetus and ladies, I'm so sorry, not every egg that we have in our body is meant to be a baby. And it's just part of our cycle. Every 28 days or 35 days or whatever your cycle is, your body has to process. And that egg is just the trigger that is one of the steps that triggers the next step, you know. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to become a baby. So when we mass produce all of these eggs in that stemming process, I had over 26 follicles and I only, I only got 11 eggs. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I have PCOS, so some of them were just the follicles were filled with fluid and there wasn't an egg. I got 11 eggs, which was wonderful, but not every egg was meant to accept the sperm. When they did IGSI and put the sperm in and fertilize, you know, they did that with nine of them. Um, then only eight actually accepted it, you know, and fertilized. And then from there, only six kept dividing like they're supposed to be they kept dividing to the blastocyst stage now we're doing a frozen embryo transfer just for you guys some of you are doing fresh but 
you know, we hit that day five and day six, that's what they give us. Even to day seven, they give those little eggs, embryos, time to really get to blastocyst stage. But we had six that made it that were going to freeze. And, and so what they do is they take that sample out, that cell, that, since it's divided so many times, they take a cell out and that's what they send to Genesis. And Genesis says, oh, is there 23 chromosomes of me and 20, 23 mm. of you? You know, they, they want to make sure it's all right. And is there any kind of um, abnormalities? Things like that. So when they came back, only three came back normal. So let's take a step back. When I had six, the top two, your embryolo embryologist mm -hmm. grades them. They're trained. They're not just somebody off the street. They, they know what they're looking for. They watched it grow. They, they know what they're going after. They grade them. You're going off of a human, a person's experience in order to make that judgment call. In our case, the top two that were create, graded great or excellent or whatever the top one the top two were great and then the other four were good you know the next one down perfect so if we didn't do pgs testing we probably would have put the two top ones in not knowing blindly whether or not they were normal or not now the embryologist doesn't do any kind of scientific testing on it per se like the genesis does so they're saying it's good based Lost off their no. knowledge their experience their check sheet their education and everything good thing they did it, they our embryologist was wonderful because they graded these top two ones wonderful and then the other four when they came back the three that were genetically normal it happened to be that the top two were normal and they were able to tell you the sex of those um two that's just a benefit i don't know some people feel it's a priority sorry my dog wants to be in the Roscoe video wants to be in <laughs> um but some people feel that that's something they want to know and some people don't want to know we only want a healthy baby Top two came back normal, and one of the other good ones came back normal. So if we didn't do PGS testing, we would have, I don't know if we would have put the top two best ones in. We might have put one of those and one of the good ones, and hopefully, you know, you're taking that risk and chance that they implant and grow, not result in a miscarriage. I mean, we're speaking, you know, guessing at this point because mm -hmm. we did the testing, um, but if you chose not to do the testing and people are like, oh, no problem, you would have just put the two in. Well, you're also going off of what your embryologist is grading. You could have a perfectly graded one. The embryologist is looking at it going, yep, this is top dog, but came back abnormally, chromosomally abnormal. Mm -hmm. So that would have led into a miscarriage. A lot of us are in a financial situation where we're paying out of pocket or we're blessed with grants or whatever our situation is. Some of us are... are hawk and hole in the hole you know with money situations and stuff and i don't know if if it's worth that risk not doing pgs testing in my perception we were awarded a grant which is a huge blessing um so it helped us save the money you know get the loan on the truck for this other stuff there's a few things that come up that that you need to buy your medications and things like that you need to financially be prepared for and so we chose to spend that money and not choose to move forward with the frozen embryo transfer until we knew for sure what we were putting in were normal. Our reproductive endocrinologist, who's amazing, stated that our chances of putting one in is 75% if we put one of the good ones in, 75%. If we put two in, doesn't matter what two, could be the top one, top two or one of the top two and the one that was still that came back good um, it improves our chances of a pregnancy to 86%. Now, this is our chances based off of yeah. all of my test results and blood work and, and everything. So, 86%. So, you think to yourself, that's only 11% increase. Is it worth putting two in? This is just of a pregnancy. Now, when you put two in, you increase your odds. Well, not increase. It's a 50% chance you'll have twins. Our choice, we're going to put one good one and the one, I'm sorry, the top one and the good one. We're leaving one of the top ones in the bank frozen mm -hmm. because if this doesn't work, because you, you, you never know if this doesn't stick. You know, we have a, a viable embryo that's great at top quality mm -hmm. that we can go back for later next year, which you have to like go through the whole process again and buy the meds again and you have to pay for that service again and... And so we are choosing to put two back in. Miscarriage is a big deal. Um, 
it could happen to any of us. I have never been pregnant before, and I'd love to be, but I, I read these stories, and I'm, my heart is with these other women who have infertility and have experienced miscarriage, and, and it happens from any, I mean, I've read stories up to 16, and in the 20 weeks that they've lost their baby, you know, just in the gestational period, and it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching, you know, so we all are tough people. We can go through this. We will not be given anything that we can't handle. I get that. I support that. But if it's in our power to do something ahead of the game, like I had weight loss surgery. I still have some weight to lose, but I know I'm probably going to lose it in nausea. But, you know, I, I did the weight loss surgery. We're eating healthy. We are exhausting all efforts that we can for this transfer and this frozen embryo transfer. If we had to do IVF all over again from scratch we would do the same thing yeah. we would not not do pgs testing if this results in miscarriage it has nothing to do with the necessarily the embryo i shouldn't say nothing it could be but for the most part it's timing it's your uterus it's your doctor luckily our doctor does everything in advance like she doesn't give it a fighting chance to fail now if it, it's possible it'll fail but she exhausts everything the saline and the dye and i just had a hysteroscopy yesterday where she goes in with the camera and looks at everything so she doesn't wait for there to be a problem to go back and see why did that happen luckily our doctor goes in and like prepares you for success from the get-go like we are doing this all all these steps that why not you know and make sure everything's perfect um, make sure it's all fluffy and happy and everything in there for the embryos so back to pgs testing would you do it would you pay an extra $4,000 for a genetic screening? I would. I would because it's reducing the chances. Could I still miscarry? Yes. Could it not work out? Could I have a child with some sort of disability? Yes. The geneti genesis paperwork even tells you it's not even 100% accurate. But I'm exhausting everything that we can to have a successful pregnancy we're even considering while well, we're doing embryo glue, which there's no statistics on embryo glue and whether or not that even works or doesn't work. But what we do know is it doesn't hurt anything. So why not? So it's, it's 588 bucks. We're going to find it and figure it out and, and um, do embryo glue. And all that is is this uh, medium that they put your embryos in when they mm -hmm thawing and the medium is comparable or mimics the medium in your uterus so it's like setting the tone to be on stage you know your little embryos are getting prepped to be on stage and they have that experience and feeling and all those chemicals and everything that's just like the uterus so when they go into the uterus and she puts them where she wants them you know it's the same composition and chemical acid or whatever it is that they call it but so it's not like they stick glue on it and stick it in. No, <laughs> like there's a whole nother little process. But again, exhausting all efforts, like set yourself up for success. Miscarriage rates are out there. And if we're, if you're already seeing your RE, then the, you, we already, we're, you're already faced with challenges, you know? So if you can afford it, or if you can find a way, I know we all want the baby now. We want we want to have that pregnancy. We want to have it all now, now, now. If I had to wait six months because I couldn't afford that $4,000, we were going to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, we were going to figure it out and wait because it's worth it instead of rushing into something that might not work. So there's our opinion. I think I covered everything, miscarriage yeah. and chromosomes. Cool, so we're going to do another video on uh, my hysteroscopy. Do, do, do. <laughs>